Hey friends, welcome to the third part of the Google UX course review. But let's start with a joke, because Coursera, the platform that the Google course is on, never ceases to amaze me. This time I decided to switch devices, so I decided to actually use this course on my iPad Pro. And all the quizzes have black text on like a very dark grey background. So they're impossible to read, basically. But what's even funnier, the first time I encountered that was a question about how accessibility is affecting UX design. So I guess the jokes write themselves, right? But back to the course. Part 3 is all about wireframes and low fidelity prototypes. And this time the difficulty is actually much higher than in the previous parts of the course. And this actually shows because in the first part of the course, the foundation, there used to be like 30,000 people in the assignments and in the forums. And right now in part three, when it's a lot more difficult and it takes a lot more time to complete these assignments, there's like three to 400 people only. So there is a huge drop off after the first part of the course. And what it also means that because there is less people, it's usually gonna take a lot longer for your assignment to get reviewed by your peers. But this is actually good news because if there is less people at the end of the course, that means that there's gonna be a much larger chance for you to actually get hired as a UX designer by some companies. Because I was initially expecting that there's gonna be like 40,000 new designers, but apparently most people don't have it in them to actually commit as much, especially when they see those harder exercises and when they realize that they need to put in a lot more time to finish them. And this time I wanted to approach this course from a slightly different perspective. Because at first I tried to look at it as a way for complete beginners to become UX designers and we've already established that it worked for that pretty well. But let's assume that you've been in this industry for two or three years and you've done some projects, you've done some wireframes, some prototypes already, so you know your stuff. And what if you just want the certificate? Is this course gonna be difficult or challenging for you or can you maybe finish it very quickly? Well, apparently to finish the third part of the course, all you have to do is finish the three assignments, the peer graded ones. And of course they are difficult to make, they take some time to make and they're not really something that you can finish in 15 minutes. But if you just finish those three assignments, you don't have to watch any of the videos and read any of the extra materials, and you don't even have to pass any of the quizzes, and you'll still have a 100% grade at the end of the course. And I don't know if it's a bug of Coursera or if it's on purpose, but in general, those three assignments were supposed to test your knowledge of wireframing and prototyping. So if you pass them, I guess that means that you passed the course. And of course, to test that, I just went in and I first did the assignment. So I watched no videos and I read no additional materials, additional information. I just went to the final part of the course and decided to just take on the assignment then the second one and then the third one. And it took me about an hour to finish storyboarding low fidelity wireframes and then converting them into a Figma prototype. So all of that took about an hour and if it's gonna take two hours even, it's still fine to finish the course and get a grade. And of course, if you've never done design, the difficulty level here is gonna be a little bit too big for you to just finish the assignment. So you'll have to actually watch the videos and learn how to finish them. But if you've done some wireframing or some prototyping, it's gonna be pretty easy for you. Okay, now let's go into some minor things before we wrap it up. So I found some little bugs or problems, like they mentioned that you can use the shift key in Figma to draw straight lines, and then the line is gonna just straighten itself. But then they mentioned that you can't really use that shift key to draw diagonal lines, which is not true because if you hold the shift key, you'll be able to also draw 45 degree lines. So I think that they meant something else by that and then they just left it in. Another weird feature is how the peer graded exercises have the highest score first at the top and then at the bottom of the list. So if you're grading them, you have those radio buttons. Uh, in one of the quizzes, the high score or the passing score is at the top and then in the next quiz, it's at the bottom. And I don't think that they should randomize that because it's not a quiz of like your experience or your knowledge. It's about helping you to quickly assess what somebody else did. So those numbers, the high numbers or the high values should be always at the same spot, either at the top or at the bottom. And switching it up like that is just pointless. 
The explanation on how to do wireframing and prototyping is quite good. They even mentioned some basic gestalt principles, which are very helpful and actually are the basis of creating good hierarchy in your design. So this is something you should pay special attention to if you have never done any designing. And also they show you how to move rectangles around and basically that's going to be most of what you'll be doing as a designer in the future. So that's good. That's, uh, that's some experience that's going to be actually useful. If you want to learn to finally design part three is gonna be all about that it's gonna be very practical experience very hands-on but also it's a little bit more difficult and it's gonna take a little bit longer for you to complete those assignments and while this is completely understandable from the start and even to be expected the app that you're gonna be designing is going to be using Android patterns because it's Google, right? They're teaching you how to design an app for their own operating system. And I don't really think that they mention iOS that much in this entire course and that it has some different patterns. So if you want to be flexible and design for all the patterns and have a portfolio that shows multiple skills, you might have to do some iOS apps after this course because they're not gonna be here. And of course, the best portfolios are the ones that have multiple different projects. So web ones, Android ones, iOS ones, tablet ones as well. So the more different types of devices that you cover in your portfolio, the better. And here they only focus on Android. Okay, so what do I think about the third part of the course? Well, I think it's pretty good. You still need to keep in mind that you're gonna have to actually do a lot of extra work after you finish this course to build up a portfolio that's gonna be valuable. But it's a great start and it's a great start into the practical side of designing. So this is going to be practical. This is going to be more useful, but at the same time, it's going to be more challenging. So you need to be aware of that and you need to be aware that a lot less people are actually in this part of the course, probably because it's so challenging and people aren't really that motivated anymore. And many of the people who got the first certificate from the foundation, they think that's going to be enough. And I think right now that the value of like the final certificate that you're gonna get if you finish all seven is actually gonna be pretty high. So if you're going through the course, I think that this certificate is actually gonna be worth something, at least for a couple of months before more people pick it up. And if you've been designing for a year or two, there are chances that you can finish the assignments without actually going through the course and get this part of the course certificate a lot faster. So that's it for me. As usual, do the course if you want to be a UX designer, but be sure to also do some extra work on the side. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you're taking this course or if you plan to finish it and what are your thoughts on it already. Cheers.